This is the Canon 50D and I'm going to talk through how to actually use the built-in flash on this camera. So I'm going to switch on the camera and the reason I'm holding down the set button is because I have Magic Lantern installed on it. So when I hold down the set button, it won't actually load the Magic Lantern software but it will instead just load the normal Canon software. So let me just increase the brightness on, on the screen. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Okay, so if you go to the flash control menu, once it's disabled, then the built-in flash settings and external flash settings are disabled in the menu, so you won't be able to actually select them. And there's an external flash custom function setting, if you try to enter that, it will tell you that you can't enter it because an external flash isn't connected to it. So if you go up to flash firing and enable this, now we have enabled uh, flash firing, but if we go out of the menu and try to take a picture, I actually have the lens cap on this camera. so. So it's not taking a picture because it's completely black and it's not firing the flash. So in order to fire the flash, you have to press the physical button on front of the camera to open the flash. And this is in manual mode. So if you're not in manual mode and you're in one of the basic automatic modes, then the flash will open automatically. But in manual mode, you actually have to press the physical button in front of the camera in order to open the flash. So now if I press the shutter button, the flash will operate. This is the button you press to open the flash. So, so the majority of the basic automatic modes, they actually operate the flash the camera operates the flash by itself without any requirement to change any settings uh, from the camera operator. There are three modes, um, three of the basic automatic modes uh, that don't fire flash at all. So one of them is landscape mode, the other one is sport mode, and the third one is uh, when you have flash off. So these are actual modes on the mode dial. So you can see the icons for flash off, sport and landscape on the actual mode dial. The only kind of semi-automatic mode where you have control over the flash setting is the creative automatic mode. So in this mode, you can go into the flash setting and decide whether you want to have it off, on, or just let the camera decide. So apart from this mode, the other ones, the camera decides, or in the manual ones, uh, you, you decide. So that's pretty much how, how you use the built-in flash on the camera. It's, it's quite straightforward. There's a few things worth mentioning. So when you're in manual mode, if you set the ISO to automatic, let me actually do it. Yeah. So, yeah, there you can see that ISO is set to automatic. So we set the ISO to automatic. It will automatically select ISO 400. Let me take off that. So if you just take a picture. I think the camera can't zoom. Let me just put something in front of it. Um, and there, so you can see the ISO which was used is 400 and the flash was used. So in the automatic modes, being the, I think what Canon calls creative modes, you don't have much control or any control over the firing of the flash and you don't need to open the flash. So if I close the flash here, 
and I go to portrait mode, which is a kind of basic automatic mode on this camera, and I press the shutter button. Okay, the picture was brighter, so it didn't need a flash. Okay, let me put the cap on the camera and try that again. And there the flash opens. So I'm going to take the cap off again. Another thing worth mentioning is that the camera takes the light of the flash into consideration when it's doing the exposure, when it's doing the metering, essentially. So let me just go back to manual mode. So here we have our metering modes, and I've chosen partial metering. And And when you use the flash, the camera takes that into account. So when, if you're looking at the viewfinder and you see that the exposure is correct, then that means it will be correct when you fire the flash as well. And the exposure compensation can be adjusted the same way you do in when you're not using the flash. You do have an explicit option to change the flash. Uh, where is it? Exposure compensation. And you can go up by two stops in one third increments. And that will adjust the flash exposure, exposure compensation. So what that does is fire the flash with more power to make sure that you meet the required exposure or if you're reducing the ex exposure, it fires it with less power. And all these same settings exist for both external and internal flash. And then you can also set the shutter sync whether you want first curtain or second curtain. Most of the case you just want first curtain, second curtain is for special cases if you want to take a particular picture where you want the flash to fire right before the exposure ends. And you also get the choice whether you want to have evaluative or average uh, exposure meeting. So again, for most cases, you want to have evaluative. The settings uh, for flash, you can come to the menu and change them here. Or alternatively, you also get the quick menu so in the quick menu, if you go up here, you can choose the flash exposure compensation. And you have ISO and uh, your normal compensation. Exposure locking works the same way. So you select your target and press this. And if you're looking through the viewfinder, you will see an indicator that exposure has been locked and that includes the flash exposure meaning the final image. The effective range of the flash depends on the ISO that you're using and the aperture. So it's worth keeping that in mind when you're distancing your subject from the camera to keep that in mind how far the person is and whether the light will actually reach them. When you're using a flash, there's a chance that you will get a red eye effect on your subject. So you can go to the menu, and if you go to the camera options, there's a setting called red eye on off. If you switch this on, then you have the light in front of the camera, which will fire in order to reduce the chances of red eye. Another thing worth mentioning is a lens hood. So if you're using a lens hood on your camera and you fire the flash, 
Let me just put something there so that the camera can focus on something. So we just took a picture. As you can see in the picture, let me just make this a bit bigger. You see this shadow which is being casted over that subject. And that's because of the lens hood. So if you want to use the flash, then make sure you take off the lens hood. So I'm going to take off the lens hood and take this identical picture again, just to demonstrate the difference. So now you can see that shadow isn't there. If you go to the previous picture, you see a shadow. And that's because of the lens hood. If you're using an external flash, this might be less of an issue. So for example, this is the 580EX Mark II. And when you attach it, then obviously it will be substantially higher up than the built-in flash. And because of that, it might actually go, the light will probably get past the lens hood without casting a shadow. But again, it depends on how close your subject is to the camera. One thing about these uh, external flashes is how this here, let me actually connect it and just show a few things. The EX series can actually be controlled from the camera. So if you have an EX series, um, sorry, flash. So if you have an EX series flash like this one, this is the 580 EX Mark II. I'm going to turn on the flash. And if I go to the menu and flash control, and now if I click on this menu item for external flash function settings, it should be enabled. And here you can see a list of different options I have to control the flash. And if I try to go to the built-in flash now, it should stop me from doing that. So it gives us a message that we can't use the built-in flash. So again, the external flash, just quickly go through the menus, ETTL2, uh, first curtain, and there you have the flash exposure. So if you set these on the camera, it takes effect on the flash. Whereas if you set these on the flash itself, which you can do, of course, then the flash will override the settings on the camera. So my advice is to always set everything in the camera and you can change it from here without worrying about overriding anything. And the camera works quite nicely with the flash in terms of managing exposure and and zoom as well. So for example, if you have a zoom lens, like the one I have right now on the camera, and you zoom in, then the flash can zoom alongside your zoom lens to make sure light is concentrated on, the, on your subject. I, I do highly recommend that you use an external flash whenever you're taking photographs. It's so much better than the built-in one. That's I think pretty much everything I want to mention. There's one more setting worth showing. Yes, yeah, so here you have flash sync speed in aperture priority mode. And you can set it to auto, which means the camera takes, makes the choice for you. Or you can set it to be auto between 1 250th of a second and 1. 60th of a second or you can set it to fixed at 1 over 250th of a second if i mean it depends on the flash that you're using i've set it to auto and i've never had any problems with it but if you're maybe using flashes that are not canon flashes uh, then you need to consider what you set this as and whether the flash and camera can work together to to meter your subject correctly and set the exposure accordingly. Um, but yeah, in, in those cases, one over 250 of a second might be more appropriate. But again, I think the camera will be able to, 
to deal with that situation itself. The camera does have a PC terminal port and if you have a flash unit that has a SIM cord then you can use it with that. Yeah, so the camera does have a PC terminal port and you can use that together with a flash unit that has a SIM cord. So just turning on the flash you get this light called pilot and I think it's a good way to just test your flash to make sure that it has enough battery power to actually fire a flash and you know that everything is working. So here you can choose the mode you want. And you have custom functions as well. And you can choose whether you want a high speed flash or not. And zoom, so the zoom is at 14 millimeters. And you can, so this is me setting the exposure compensation of the actual flash. So I'm going to leave it at zero for the time being. If you guys want, I can do a separate video about uh, this flash. Um, it comes with a diffuser and a bounce card as well. So you get this bounce card if you want to point the flash upwards. And you get this diffuser as well if you want to kind of just reduce the brightness a little bit. And that's part of the flash. It's not a peripheral or anything. Let me switch the flash off. And that's the battery compartment. You get four AA batteries. But yeah, let me know if you want me to create a separate video about this flash because there's a lot of features and things that you can do with an external flash. So that can be covered in a separate video. One thing I would say is when you disable flash control here, it doesn't necessarily mean that the camera is not going to use the flash. So if I set this in portrait mode, it, that option no longer exists in the menu. So it, it doesn't mean anything here. And if I, if I let me close the, put the cap on the lens so that it's dark enough so that the camera takes a picture. So if I try to take a picture now, the flash will open up and be used. Now if I close this and let's go to manual mode. In manual mode here, you can see that flash control is disabled. So if I take, try to take a picture, the flash won't open up. But if I open the flash manually myself, and try to take a picture, then the flash will work. Despite the fact that flash firing is disabled. So don't put too much weight on the menu item flash firing being disabled. This is the button you press to open the flash. Please let me know if you have any questions about this built-in flash or using the Canon 50D with an external flash or if you want me to demonstrate how the 580EX Mark II works with the Canon 50D.